I'm in our computer room today and the lighting is not that great, but that's okay because today I'm doing a tutorial for anyone who has built a new PC and has an old PC and wants to take the stuff on the old PC and move it to the new PC. How should you go about doing that and what are my recommendations? Just a little over a month ago, I built a brand new PC for my lovely wife, Diana. It's still out in the garage and I've been itching to move it in here and swap her old PC, which was named Hotbox, which has gone through a few different variations over the years. And I'll post a link to some of those videos in the description if you're interested. But how do you take everything from an existing PC and move it to a new PC? To keep things simple, I have boiled it down to three steps. Excellent! So the three things you're gonna to need to copy from your old system to the new system are one, your personal data, your personal files, two, your programs, and three, your program settings or other files that those programs might rely on. The tools you'll need in order to do this are your old PC and your new PC, and I'm assuming that both of those are functional, up and running, Windows is installed and it's up to date. Then you will need some sort of medium for transferring the data, an external USB flash drive or SSD or other external drive is ideal, and you might need more storage on that depending on how much data you have to back up off of your old system. And then you'll want an internet connection to download programs or other files that you might need, and of course to come back and reference this video. And then once you're done and everything has gone so smoothly, you can come back to this video and hit the thumbs up button or subscribe to my channel if you want to see more tech videos and tutorials. Before you start copying files, you should double check your existing computer's configuration, specifically the storage configuration. Because if you have an old PC and a new PC and they both function independent of one another, then all you're really concerned about is the data on the old PC and where that data is located is going to be on your storage drives. You're gonna have at least one storage drive and if you're running Windows, Windows 7 or 10 or 11 is probably most likely right now, then it's probably labeled as local disk and it's probably your C drive. Now, if you've just got that C drive, it simplifies things a little bit. I have a second one terabyte SSD on this system, but I know all that's on there right now is this games folder, and then uh, I'm capturing my OBS screen cap for making this video on that drive as well. One nice thing about having a secondary drive, especially if it's one that has a lot of space, is you can just copy stuff directly to that drive, then physically remove the drive from your old system, and then just install it in your new system and keep using things as is. That is what my plan is for today, so I'm just making a folder in here for backing all this stuff up called March 2022 Backup. And note that if I was using an external drive or an SSD and I had plugged it into the system, it would be popping up as another drive just like this. So functionally from what you guys are seeing, it's gonna be the same as if you were using an external. Beyond that, everything else you can see as far as the data represented on the system is stored on this C drive. That includes everything that might be on the desktop. And that also includes all these system folders like uh, the documents folder, the downloads folder, music, pictures, and videos if you use those. One thing you might wanna double check for all these folders is if you right click them and go to properties, you can go to location. This location can actually be remapped, although someone would have have to have done that with your PC. So if someone else set up your system or you're just not sure, double check to make sure these locations are on the C drive. And that will allow you to make sure that you don't have any files that are on another drive that's on the system that you're forgetting to back up. With that said, now that we have a drive to back up to and we've made a little backup folder here, we can start copying the first thing, which is going to be personal data. And that means files that are unique to you, typically things that are ir irreplaceable, like personal photos. You should always ideally have already backed up in more than one location. I always try to copy photos to at least an external drive, if not cloud storage somewhere or even better, like a family member's house that you share data with that you can sync back and forth to so you both have backups in both locations. But these are files that you cannot just re-download from the internet, so uh, let's back those up first. And since this is not my PC, it's my wife's PC, I'm not gonna do a whole lot of organization for her. I'll, I'll leave that up to her in the future. So in the backup folder, I'll make a folder for desktop, one for downloads, one for pictures, and so on. And then we can just start copying. Okay, I am at least gonna organize photos, but uh, do bear in mind, if you're doing what I'm doing and dragging and dropping, there's two ways to do it. You can just drag and drop, and if you drag and drop with a left click from one drive to a different drive, it will copy from one drive to the other, and it will leave the files on the original drive. You can also right click and drag over like this, and here you can choose move. And I find that this helps me keep track of the backup process. Although it should be noted that this does mean we're still only keeping these files in one location. So I'm only doing this because I know these files are backed up elsewhere already. I'll just choose move, but this means that it's going to pull it off of the desktop and into that folder. And then I know, oh, well, it's not on the desktop anymore. So I've copied that and backed it up. 
Japan. It, oh, see, there's some files that you're, they're just too precious to leave behind, obviously. Oh, some more pictures from the desktop. Move. All right, and now our desktop folder is empty. Although if we look at the desktop, we can see there's still stuff on the desktop. These are all shortcuts. If you're not familiar with shortcuts, they have a little arrow on them. And that's not a real file, it's just a shortcut. It's a representation of where a file is elsewhere on the PC. So these you can typically just trash. I'm gonna leave that one there as a reminder. So we've cleared off the desktop and we'd also of course want to look at pictures and videos. And this is where usually most of your personal data files would be stored. We have network attached storage, the free NAS build that I have built and rebuilt a few different times. So most of the photos that we uh, copy off of phones or cameras, we copy over to that for a little bit more secure long-term backup storage, which is why the videos folder and the pictures folders uh, on this computer are pretty much empty. From there, you'll definitely wanna check out the documents folder. And here is where also lots of different programs like to save stuff. So feel free to check individual folders. A lot of them you know, might just be empty and not something you need to copy. But if you play video games, the video game will often create a folder in the documents folder to store game configuration options or backup saves. My wife is a huge fan of Overwatch, so this folder is definitely something that we should be backing up. If you're at all uncertain, it's okay to just grab the entire documents folder and copy it over and worry about that later if you need to focus on getting the transfer done. Of course, if you're like me, you've maybe tried that before and then you have various folders in different places of like this backup that was done two years ago and this one from four Four years ago and you've never really quite gone through and sorted those all out but at least the data was there if you might have needed it we also have a downloads folder the downloads folder can often be super crowded with a bunch of different stuff and here is where you might have more personal files if they weren't moved from the downloads folder somewhere else but most browsers like edge firefox and chrome default to downloading stuff to the downloads folder so it is worth taking a look at fortunately all the files in here are installers so this is the chrome installer this is the nz XT cam installer, Steam, Rocket Swarm, the Battle.net installer. All of these can be re-downloaded from the internet and all of these also likely have updated installers that would be better to download from the internet anyway. So I'm just gonna delete them. So now we have combed through looking for personal files that we need to back up uh, over the desktop, pictures and videos folder, the documents folder. Music is another thing that's replaceable to some extent online. So you can re-download MP3 files and stuff like that. That said, not everyone wants to do that. So if you have a music collection, copy that over too. And then there is the 3D objects folder, which I still don't understand what it is or why it's there. So. There's, it's empty, so I'm not gonna bother with it. So we should now be just about done with step one, copying all of our personal data off of the old system, but this is something that you really wanna double check and make absolutely sure you've been as thorough as possible with. So it may or may not be worth your while to go directly into the C drive and dig through some of these folders to see if there's anything else there that you might need to copy. One final tip before I move on, if you're trying to dig up more stuff or if you feel like there's more stuff on your drive and you're not able to find it, Winderstat is a little application that you can download and run. And I'm not running it directly right now, but basically you run it, it combs through the entire drive, and then it gives you a visual representation of everything that's on the drive, and it's also color-coded. So extremely large blocks you can click on and be like, what's taking up that much data? And it will tell you, oh, this is a system file, or like all these little green files are MP3s. So in this way you can pick out certain files, like especially if you have big video files that might be taking up a lot of space, but you can't locate them. With step one done though, we can move on to step two, and step two, Two is to back up your programs. Now programs are different than personal files because you don't necessarily need to copy the programs off of your old computer and onto your new computer. What is often better is to just download the programs from the internet directly onto your new computer to make sure that you have the most up-to-date versions. And also because programs installed on your old computer aren't often easy to just drag and drop and copy, you often need an installer to install a program, and you might not still have those. There's a couple ways to look at what programs are currently installed. One is to go back to your C drive and just look through your program files folders. Some programs do not install there, but almost every single one should. But that can get a little confusing because there might be system folders in there or other confusing things. So the better thing to do, in my opinion, is to go to the add or remove programs uh, part of the control panel. I guess if you don't want to search for it, you can go to settings and it's under apps and apps and features. And here you have a list of installed programs. I've copied this list as simply as just doing a screen grab, taking a picture with my phone. Windows plus print screen will take a screenshot of what you're currently looking at. Just remember that that screenshot will then appear in your pictures folder. So you'll want to copy that to your backup drive. 
Or you could even use pencil and paper technology to just copy down or write down uh, the applications that you know you still want. Again, keep in mind, you do not need an exhaustive list here. Some apps like Candy Crush, Soda Saga are just default installed by Windows and shouldn't even be there in the first place. So it really helps if it's your computer to just reality check and make sure that the apps you're writing down are the ones that you actually use on a regular basis. Or if you're doing this transfers for somebody else, this is a good time to sit them down and be like, what do you actually use on your computer? What programs do you launch all the time? And that way you can run down the list and make sure you don't miss anything. If you do happen to be on a metered internet connection or you're concerned about re-downloading a bunch of data or how much time it might take, then it might also be worth your while to double check that downloads folder like I showed you earlier. There might be installed all packages there that were downloaded previously that you could just copy and that might save you a little bit of time just remember that if you try to go into like the program files folder you typically cannot just drag and drop a whole folder from the program files folder into your backup and then onto your new pc because like i said you often need to run an installer to install a program rather than just having the folder that's not always the case though and if you have a lot of games installed on your system then here is where it really might be worth your while to back stuff up rather than re-downloading it. For example, the Overwatch installation on this computer is about 20 gigs, and you know that's gonna take some time to re-download depending on your internet speed. So with a lot of games, you can drag and drop and copy the bulk data files of the game, and then depending on the launcher you're using, whether it's Steam or the Battle.net launcher, there are various ways to get the launcher on your new system to recognize the game that's been copied over. And there's a really good written article on that that I will also link in the description for anyone who's copying stuff over. That said, for Steam specifically, if you go into the Steam folder, should be a Steam Apps folder. I originally set up Steam to uh, download games to the Savage one terabyte drive on here, but in the Steam Apps folder, there is a common folder, and then that will be where all of the individual folders for each game are. So if you copy those over, then you can plop them onto the new system in the proper folder location, and then using the article linked in the description, it'll walk you through the steps for getting Steam to recognize those and then not having to re-download them. And that's all for the second step. So now we can move on to the third step, which is copying program data. And this is sort of a catch-all category for extra stuff that programs might need that you might not know that you need in order for the program to work the way it did in the past. Let me give you an example to clarify. If you have a bunch of shortcuts or bookmarks saved on your browser, well, yes, with a lot of browsers, you can log into the browser and it will store that in the cloud like Chrome will do that. So keeping in mind that if your browser has the ability for you to log in and store that stuff in the cloud, then you can back it up that way, but you can also manually back it up. This is how you do it in Chrome. It's uh, pretty similar in Firefox and other browsers. We're gonna click on the three dots and go over to our bookmark manager and then click on these three dots and go to export bookmarks. And we've gone ahead and saved these to our backup drive. And the other part of backing up files that some programs you use might be reliant on, I've kind of already showed you, but just to reiterate, if you go back over to your documents folder, there will likely be folders here that have unique files, uh, configuration files, or otherwise that tie into the programs that you use. So that's something that you hopefully have already backed up in that step. But if you didn't, double check it now and make sure that for any of the programs that you use regularly, there's nothing there that you need to copy and back up as well. And that should just about cover you, but once again, if you go over the list of programs that you already made in step two, you might wanna double check those, make sure you have no unique programs that might save data elsewhere on your drive that you need to copy. Or in particular, keep an eye out for stuff like this. A lot of printers have unique utilities that might be difficult to find sometimes, especially if you're using something older. We have a brother printer that works really great. It's a network attached and everything like that. But sometimes it's a little finicky if you don't install the utilities. But that was the last thing on my list to talk about. So at this point, I should be able to pull the old PC out, drop the new PC in where it was, copy the stuff off of that drive onto the new system, and get it set up to the point where when my wife comes back to use it, it's pretty much the exact same as her old system was. Okay, so I've placed the system where the system is supposed to go, and uh, as I mentioned in the build video for this, the reason why I went with the flipped orientation is so you can actually see it from this side when the system is where it is here. It's also much, much, much brighter than my PC right there. And uh, the free NAS is in the middle. And I do want to point out, since there's, you know, cables over here, various things have cluttered up the space since I did the original cable management video in here with the sit-stand desks and everything. But I want to take another pass at it and uh, make things look a little bit more pristine in here and probably move the free NAS down to the lower level, although that is pretty close to the ground. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to figure some stuff out. I'd also like to get rid of the texture on the walls in here, like we did out in the living room out there, but I'm getting a little bit too far ahead of myself. Main point is, Look, system boots up. Uh, I should activate Windows, that'd be cool too. And the drive from her old system is this uh, HyperX Savage one terabyte SSD. I just popped it out of there. I haven't even taken it off of the tray. 
This is a SATA to USB adapter, SATA to USB 3.0 adapter actually specifically. So these are really convenient. These also work with uh, mechanical hard drives. Although I do believe the power requirement can vary on that, but uh, just gonna plug that in there. Plug the other end into my conveniently accessible front panel USB 3. Open folder to view files. And there is all the stuff that we just backed up. In case you're wondering, this is a 42 inch 4K monitor that my wife uses. And actually she's getting a little over this one. It's only 60 Hertz and she'd like to game in here again, which is part of the reason why we're thinking about swapping out. So stay tuned for a future video. I'd like to do sort of a revamp of my wife's current setup to kind of go along with her super fancy PC that's over there now. So if you guys have any suggestions for that, I would love to hear them in the comment section, of course. And in the meantime, just uh, give me a few minutes here to copy this backup stuff to the new system. Just copied the desktop folder to the desktop. It's very, very meta. I guess I can't say meta anymore. It's like desktopception. I don't know. My old Windows 8 Pro licenses are the gifts to keep on giving. I've activated so many PCs with these. Right, so at this point, it's just a matter of kind of doing things in reverse order. Like I can go back to the bookmarks manager to import my bookmarks. Oh, it looks like it just dropped them all into an imported folder. That's, that's cool. Well, at least they're here. And if she really wanted to, she could just log back into Chrome. And with that, I am mostly done. Uh, there are still a few more things to do, but uh, let, let's reset the desktop background to what it was before. And I just need to double check that programs list to reinstall any of the programs that are still needed. And then of course, once my wife actually gets home, she can reality check and make sure there's nothing glaringly missing from this that she needs to set up as well. She will need to slightly transition from Windows 10 to Windows 11. It's not too jarring. I've found it to be pretty simple to use once you get a hang of a few of the UI quirks. And hopefully for you guys watching at home, you now have a better idea of how to transfer all your stuff from an old system to a new system. And apart from the step-by-step -step stuff that I talked about today, a lot of it boils down to having good practices in place for where you keep your stuff on your computer from the get-go so you know where things are when you need to go in and back them up. And if you're comfortable with that and you're comfortable with the steps I walked you through in this video, then it also gives you an extra layer of protection if your system is compromised. If you need to wipe your Windows installation, reformat and reinstall Windows, Windows, then having these backup steps in place already means you can reset your system if you ever got a virus or malware or something along those lines. But guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And as mentioned, hit the like button if you enjoyed it and check the description for links to useful stuff like Windurstat and some of the other things I mentioned today. You can also find a link to my store down there at paulshardware.net where you can buy shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other high quality merchandise to help support my channel and get yourself some high quality merch at the same time. And if you're not already subscribed, maybe consider subscribing as well. Thanks again, you guys, and we'll see you in the next video.